India's Supreme Court is considering a challenge to the country's non-recognition of same-sex marriage, a move opposed by the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, which views it as a Western concept without constitutional basis. Activists argue for equal citizenship for LGBTQ individuals. The ruling could alter India's traditionally conservative stance. Presently, millions of LGBTQ couples are denied legal benefits linked to marriage, such as adoption and insurance due to lack of recognition. Prosecutors in Trump's legal team clash over a potential gag order restricting Trump's comments on his indictment. This legal battle raises First Amendment concerns due to Trump's status as a Republican presidential frontrunner. The special counsel's team argues Trump's statements pose a threat to witnesses and potential jurors. A previous New York state gag order is in place, but its extent varies from what's being proposed in this case. The hearing will determine if a broader gag order is implemented and its potential implications, including fines or imprisonment for violations. At the age of 35, Daniel Naboa, heir to a banana fortune, has become Ecuador's youngest ever president, winning by a margin of about five points over his leftist rival, Luisa Gonzalez. Naboa focused his campaign on addressing violent crime, youth employment, and attracting foreign investment. In his victory message, he pledged to prioritize security and employment. Ecuador has been experiencing a surge in violent crime related to drug trafficking, making it one of the most violent countries in the region. Naboa will be sworn in on November 25th and serve until 2025, completing the term of the outgoing president. Hamas warns of a looming humanitarian and environmental crisis as over 1,000 Palestinians' bodies are trapped in the rubble of Israeli air attacks in Gaza. The death toll has reached 2,750 with 9,700 injured. Israeli bombardment continues in southern Gaza despite evacuation warnings. Hospitals are struggling as fuel runs out, and a total siege by Israel cuts off essential supplies. Israeli airstrikes have persisted since Hamas fighters entered Israel on October 7, killing many and capturing dozens. Global oil prices slightly surpassed $91 a barrel due to escalating tensions in the Middle East, primarily the Israel-Hamas conflict. The market fears a broader conflict that could disrupt oil supply and impact global markets. Though neither Israel nor Hamas is a major oil supplier, concerns heighten as the potential for a broader conflict involving Iran could risk up to 20 million barrels per day of oil disruption. ANZ Research predicts oil prices could reach $100 a barrel in the short term due to regional escalation risks. Analysts report a 4.5% sales dip for iPhone 15 in China's first 17 days, compared to iPhone 14 last year. Huawei's aggressive competition and consumer demand weakness are cited as factors. Huawei has surpassed Apple as the top-selling smartphone manufacturer in China. Apple faces challenges, including bans on iPhones for government use and a culturally tarnished image. However, robust domestic sales in the U.S. may offset the Chinese downturn. Apple's quarterly earnings report, expected on November 2, will shed light on iPhone 15's impact. If Israel refutes claims of agreeing to a ceasefire for humanitarian aid access and foreign exits from southern Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office issued a statement rejecting the reports following discussions involving Egypt and the U.S. Israel's military efforts continue against Hamas after the October 7 cross-border attack, prioritizing civilian safety amidst an anticipated ground operation. International efforts to facilitate aid delivery and evacuations at the Rafah border crossing with Egypt are ongoing, aiming to alleviate the crisis in Gaza. Joseph M. Shuba, a Chicago landlord, faces murder and hate crime charges for fatally stabbing a six-year-old boy and injuring his mother, reportedly due to their Muslim faith. The victims of Palestinian descent were targeted based on ongoing Middle Eastern conflicts. President Biden and First Lady expressed shock over the attack, denouncing hate and bigotry. The Justice Department initiated a federal hate crime investigation. The tragic incident heightens concerns within Muslim and Palestinian communities. Israel's military readiness responds to recent Hamas attacks. Illinois officials and communities unite against such hatred. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis greeted 270 American passengers, including 91 children, arriving in Tampa from Israel. The evacuation was part of Operation Promised Land by Project Dynamo, rescuing Americans amid the Hamas conflict. Governor DeSantis' executive order 
allowed the Florida Division of Emergency Management to coordinate evacuations and transport supplies. The order aims to assist over 20,000 stranded Americans, including Floridians, in Israel. Project Dynamo has been instrumental in organizing evacuations and rescuing hostages held by Hamas. In an interview, President Biden cautioned Israel against occupying Gaza in response to Hamas attacks. He emphasized the need for Hamas elimination and advocated for a Palestinian authority and a path to a Palestinian state. Biden called for a humanitarian corridor to aid Gaza's trapped civilians. He assured U.S. support for Israel without engaging American troops in combat. Israel's envoy confirmed no intent for Gaza occupation. The conflict escalates and humanitarian challenges mount in the densely populated area.